Good morning. It's good to be with you again. And today is a beautiful day, so I hope you can get out and enjoy some of it. But today, as we continue our study, we're going to be looking again at God's deliverance of his people Israel from their bondage in Egypt and the plagues that God placed upon Egypt to show his power and his resolve to set his people free. And it's that freedom that we're going to talk a little bit more about today, develop a little bit more in the 10th plague. Because the 10th plague was not just uh, a plague upon Egypt, it was also a promise, a promise of a greater freedom. Not just an earthly freedom from captivity, but a freedom from death itself. And how those two freedoms serve to help us remember the, the dual graces of God. And before we begin, I'd like to read a passage which talks about this. From Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? This passage talks about two freedoms, two graces of God. That grace of forgiveness given in his son. The absolute freedom from sin and death and the promise of eternity. But how that can also remind us of God's grace during this life. How he protects us and provides for us and delivers us in one way or another from all the things that assault us here and now. We're going to see that as we look more at this tenth plague. Now what this tenth plague was, Moses came to, to Pharaoh his final time and said this is going to be it. God is going to come through Egypt and strike down the firstborn son of every family, Egyptian and Israelite alike. And that will be the last time you see me. You will beg us to leave. Pharaoh, of course, didn't listen like he did with the last nine plagues, and so God made good. God was about to come through and kill the firstborn son of every family. But he would give them a way out addressed to the Israelites specifically, but if there had been any believing Egyptians, this would have applied to them as well. If they want to spare their son, what they can do is on the 10th day of the month, take a lamb or a goat, one year old and male, without any blemish or defect, and set it aside. On the 14th day, you kill that goat or lamb. You take its blood, paint it over the doorpost of your house, and when God passes through, he would see that, and pass over your house, sparing the life of your son. In essence, he had a choice. As a father or mother, you could watch your son die, according to God's decree, or you could trade the life of a lamb for the life of your son. And I'm sure it was a no-brainer for everybody who believed God, everybody who took him seriously. Of course you would trade the life of a lamb without hesitation to spare your son. And I hope Without me even explaining it, you can see the promise there. How God, because of sin, decreed that all of his children would have to die. But in his heart, it was a no-brainer. Without hesitation, he willingly sacrificed another to spare the lives of his children. This is a prophecy of Jesus. And you see this play out so beautifully in history. Where, as Jesus is about to celebrate his last Passover on earth, on the tenth day of the month... This male lamb of God, without blemish or defect, rides into Jerusalem presenting himself. And then on the 14th day, on Monday Thursday at twilight, he gives his body and blood to his disciples, saying this is the blood of the covenant, of God's promise. This is the blood that is going to be shed so that you can live. Beautiful promise. And God wants his people to know that. He's not just going to deliver them from bondage in Egypt, but much greater, he is going to deliver them from death itself. And that by far is the greatest promise that you and I have. But those two promises complement each other and help us to remember both promises. For instance, you and I can look at our lives, and I, I hope, I pray, that we can see where God has helped us in the past, has delivered us in the past. And that can be a reminder of God's love. It can be a reminder of how much God cherishes us and of how God has a home for us in heaven that he bought the blood of his son. There are going to be times, probably, as sinful human beings we are, where we question God's deliverance. When we're under pressure or life is difficult or we find ourselves in a pandemic, where is God's release? Where is God's relief? 
And it's then that we turn to that greater promise of which we have to never doubt. And as we read in Romans chapter 8, if God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? When times are dark and we don't know what to do, or we don't know what to think, or we don't know what tomorrow will bring, we turn to that one thing we know absolutely. God has sacrificed his son to buy us back, to give us life. He loves us infinitely. He loves you infinitely. And he will get you through whatever you're going through right now in the best possible way. That's something we can trust. And I hope you do. I hope that gives you peace. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for all of the blessings in life, those deliverances that you give us from our own personal problems and the problems that we share. But above all, we thank you for your forgiveness. Help us to see in that your love and, and gain trust, not just in our eternity, but in each day of our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I'm not going to repeat all of the announcements um, that I gave yesterday. I, if you can look on YouTube. There is a, a COVID-19 update, or a, I think it's labeled Devotion and Update for May 14th, um, where I explained more about what we are going to do. Um, so please take a look at that. Um, we are putting plans together. Uh, to reopen, and we're trying to do this in the safest possible way, but we can look at that more. And there are going to be daily updates, or at least most every day, on our webpage. There's a button on the webpage that says COVID-19 updates. We're going to be placing updates on there to keep you uh, informed as to what our plans are, where we are at in the planning process, or again, if you have any questions, just please give me a call, 859 859-361-0027. And remember, this Sunday, we are celebrating the Lord's Supper, Sunday, uh, May 17th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please stay in your cars. You'll be ushered in to celebrate the sacrament, one family at a time. God be with you.